Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'm revisiting the MVVM pattern in Blazor. Does Blazor inherently satisfy MVVM use cases? If so, which ones? Are there any new libraries that can help fill in the gaps? The answer to these questions and others are coming up right now, right here on You Know What. Yeah. Blazor Train! Now, I've already done two episodes on MVVM, 24 and 25, but that was back in October 2020. Since then, I've built a few Blazor apps for my customers, and it seemed like MVVM was overkill for them. I would introduce a view model and get them going, and they would almost always ignore it and use code behind going forward. So I'm revisiting this idea altogether. But before we tackle these questions, let's review. The model view view model pattern, or MVVM, actually has a history with Microsoft. Here's what Wikipedia says. MVVM is a variation of Martin Fowler's presentation model design pattern. It was invented by Microsoft architects Ken Cooper and Ted Peters specifically to simplify event-driven programming of user interfaces. The pattern was incorporated into WPF and Silverlight. John Gossman, one of Microsoft's WPF and Silverlight architects, announced MVVM on his blog in 2005. So a view model isn't hard to understand. It's a glorified code behind class for a view. In our case, a view is a Blazor page or other component. One goal for a view model is to not be tightly coupled to the view or the models, so that if either the view or the models change, there's only one place to deal with those changes. Another goal for a view model is to make the code behind more testable. Since the view model has a known interface, if you do it right, it would be easy to create mocks and test the UI code without UI. Now, Steve Sanderson, the inventor of Blazor, wrote and released Knockout.js in 2010. Knockout was the first really popular UI binding library for the web. Guess what pattern it used? Yep, MVVM. So MVVM has four distinct features. A view model, which acts as the code behind for a view, and it's completely abstracted from the view and the models. Two, change notification, historically using the iNotifyPropertyChanged and iNotifyPropertyChanging interfaces. Abstracting of events and event handlers, historically using some variant of the iCommand interface, and messaging between view models. Okay, so on to my burning questions. Is MVVM overkill for Blazor? What value does it actually bring? And is it worth the extra effort? A couple of weeks ago, you may recall I was in Las Vegas for the Dev Intersection Conference. I asked Jeff Fritz what he thought about using MVVM in Blazor. And here's what he told me. So this is an interesting thing that the architecture folks are always want to know and, and they want to build with. And when you think about MVVM, the, the capabilities of introducing a view model and interacting with user interface, Blazor already does that. So when you try to introduce another MVVM framework on it, it's, it's really reinventing the wheel. You don't need it. You right. already have a lot of those capabilities. Let's just embrace and use Blazor with with some code behind classes the way it was already built. Okay. Okay, so Jeff seems to think that a code behind class does enough abstraction to qualify as a view model. I asked Steve Sanderson, is MVVM necessary with Blazor? And this was his answer. Blazor aims to be agnostic to specific patterns like MVVM, MVP, observability, I notify property changed, hooks, and so on. We designed the UI refresh mechanism so the developers can use whichever patterns they like. The default refresh mechanism, re-render after an event, turns out to cover the great majority of cases without needing any broader pattern. But people are free to use whatever patterns they find useful. Steve is right on about the refresh mechanism. Components automatically re-render after an event has been called by the UI. 
But in the case where you want to refresh explicitly because a UI event didn't cause the change, you can call state as changed yourself in any component, and that component will re-render using the current values of the properties that it's bound to. I asked Tim Corey, a well-known YouTube c -sharp developer, if he thought MVVM was necessary with Blazor, and he said this, Personally, I don't think Blazor needs an additional layer of MVVM on it. I take a fairly relaxed view of development, though. Instead of worrying about if it is specifically MVVM or MVVM enough, I focus on if it can get the job done, if it is testable, and if it is simple enough to easily understand. Under that level of scrutiny, it passes with flying colors. I try not to tilt at windmills too often. I also posed the question to our friend Chris Sainty. Here's his response. Personally, I see no need for MVVM in Blazor. I've only used that pattern once, when I worked at a company that was building some mobile apps for Android, iOS, and Windows Phone using Xamarin. It worked well there, but that was because it allowed us to keep all the logic separate from each UI implementation. We don't have that problem in Blazor. There's only one UI implementation. However, if you're building an app with multiple UIs, then maybe MVVM would have a benefit. But I'm not sure if that's the situation you're looking at. Generally speaking, the MVVM implementations I've seen with Blazor seem to add a lot of bloat for no real benefit. I actively work to keep my UI and the logic associated with it as close together as possible. MVVM seems to me to want to do the opposite. I notify property changed just seems so redundant to me. We have state has changed and event binding natively in Blazor. Why add another paradigm on top of it? Finally, I asked my colleague Brian McKay what he thinks about using MVVM Blazor, and he said this. When I think of MVVM, my mind first goes to Vue, Angular, and the JavaScript world where that pattern made such a difference. Blazor does not map perfectly onto the formal MVVM pattern, but it does provide most of the same benefits. It's also easier to use, at least for me. So surely the property notification features are useful. I've already shown you how we can do that in Blazor with event handling, cascading parameters, and the like, but let's think about this for a minute. In January 2019, Jeremy Lickness wrote a blog post entitled MVVM Support in Blazor where he addressed the change notification issue using the iNotifyPropertyChanged interface. He came up with a pretty ingenious component. You define the component using a view model in which you have implemented iNotifyPropertyChanged. And when you wrap markup content in it and the view model updates, the content inside the component refreshes. Let's take a look. I've got a Blazor server application here called MVVM Revisited. I'm going to add a simple view model using Jeremy's idea. So here it is. We're implementing iNotify property changed, which gives us this public event property changed event handler called property changed. We've got an int property called number. We've got a backing field underscore number initialized to 42. In the property handler, the get just returns the backing field. But when we set, we only want to change it if the value is different than the existing value. And after we set it, we call property changed if it's not null, invoke, passing this in a new property changed event args with number or name of number. So in the setter, after we set the value, we invoke property changed. All right, this is pretty standard stuff. So since we're going to inject this, let's add it to our services. Now, in a perfect world, you'd probably want to do this by interface. As I said in my MVVM episode, a good reason for using the view model is to implement an interface to loosely couple the view model from the view. But we're going to ignore that advice and just add the number view model as a scoped service. Meaning, what? That's right. Every user gets their own instance. All right, now let's take over index razor because it wouldn't be blazor train without that. And here we're going to inject the number view model. And we just have a little UI to allow the user to set the number. 
the number property on the model. Now let's create a toolbar that we can put across the top because this is a good way to test whether another component can pick up when something has changed. So I'll create a toolbar component over here in shared. And here we're just injecting the view model and showing it in a span. Now we have to show that toolbar. So in main layout, let's replace this line with toolbar. And let's run it. All right, so here I've got my number 42, also shown here. Now when I increment this, what I want to see happen is I want this number to increment as well. Did it? No. It did not. Number is still 42. So here's Jeremy's solution. We're going to create a shared component called View Model Region. Now, this is a pattern that should look familiar to you by now. We've got a parameter, which is a render fragment called Child Content, which we are showing right up here in the markup. We also have another parameter which implements I notify property changed, and that's the view model. Now, on initialized, we're hooking the view model property changed event with just this lambda that calls state has changed. So it doesn't matter what changed, anytime the view model property changed is called, we're going to invoke state has changed which in Blazor tells your component to re-render itself. So now we've got something we can use. Check this out. Let's modify toolbar. So all I've done here is I've wrapped this span in a view model region, specifying number model as the view model, and just showing the number. Now what happens? See that? The number updates. So this is all pretty cool, but are there any other tools that will make this view model creation have less ceremony? Well, yeah. Microsoft has this Windows Community Toolkit that was originally developed for UWP, but also has some neat MVVM stuff. And the MVVM Toolkit is just the MVVM part of it, but it's broken out into a package. Microsoft.toolkit.mvvm. So in particular, take a look at this. Observable object. So observable object is a base class that your view models or observable objects can inherit from. And then your property handlers will look like this. You have your backing field. Get returns the backing field. In set, you call set property, which is on the observable object base class passing in the name property and the value. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to my csproj file and add the package right here. All right, Microsoft Toolkit MVVM. Now I'm going to add a couple of global usings. And we can change the number view model like this. So that's not bad, right? From this to this. Well, let's see if it works. Certainly does. I like this approach. I really like it. Except for the fact that I have to use a base class for my view models. There is another way to reduce ceremony when using I notify property changed, and that is to add an extension method. So I'm going to add a class called I notify property changed extensions. Now, I got this from a blog post, so let me show that to you. This is by Richard Carr, and it's called a reusable I notify property changed extension method. And there's some really good text here that talks about all the reasons for doing this and how to use it and all of that stuff. So you can go read that on your own time, but essentially, this is what he ended up with. So this extends any I notify property changed, right? That's what this is, to have this extension notify where you pass in the property changed event handler and it does the rest. So let's go back to Jeremy's implementation. 
And now let's switch over to using this extension method. All right, so it's a little bit cleaner. Here's Jeremy's, and here's with the extension method. So instead of calling property changed question mark invoke this new property change event args yada yada, we just say this dot notify and pass property changed. So this is going to be the same for every setter. So six of one, half dozen of the other. So let's remember what Steve Sanderson said. They designed the UI refresh mechanisms so that developers can use whichever patterns they like. In episode 15 of Blazor Train, I showed two ways to handle application state. One was with a pub sub mechanism, much like I notify property change. The approach I've just shown could be used as well, perhaps with more flexibility. The other technique I showed was using a cascading app state provider, which allows you to access state anywhere by creating a cascading parameter. That approach would work for a general state bag, like I showed. But I don't really want to create a cascading provider for every view model in my app. I think Jeremy's approach for view models is better for handling updates with more granularity. So another feature of MVVM is messaging. At least the MVVM Lite library implemented messaging. Messaging is the ability for your app to send a message to a view model for any reason, and for the view model to therefore respond appropriately, usually by updating one or more fields. Now the MVVM toolkit that has the observable object also has a messenger feature. And you can use this if you want to send and receive messages. The documentation is fairly straight ahead. Let's say our view model has a logged in user string property, the name of the user who's logged in. We want to update that in the toolbar where we're handling the view model. This could be done by sending a message to the toolbar view model. But let's think about this. If we were building a Windows app or a mobile app, we might want to only update a single field. And therefore, a message might be a little more explicit. Hey, I just want to change this particular thing. With Blazor, whatever component the view model is bound to will refresh. The entire component will update. In my experience, this would be a page or the toolbar or some other component. I don't need field level granularity. I just update the entire toolbar when the view model changes. We've already covered how to do that. So the bottom line is this. I think you can take what you want or need from the MVVM pattern with Blazor. The Microsoft MVVM Toolkit is a good tool for implementing some of these features, and you don't have to use all of them. When it comes to application state, there may be some objects that are ubiquitous across your app. Others may be tied to specific components or pages, and others still may be tied to tasks, as the Fluxor people suggest. It's really up to you. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. So, it seems there's a growing consensus that producing a great Blazor application doesn't require MVVM because the component model is pretty robust and there's only one UI. Unless we're talking about Blazor or hybrid, Maui hybrid apps, but that's another show. Literally. However, there are many ways to implement property change notifications. You can roll your own, as I showed in episode 15. You can use something like Fluxor, as I showed in episode 74. You can use messaging, or you can take Jeremy's piecemeal approach and wrap updatable code in view model region components. No matter what you decide, Blazor will make it easy for you. And that's for ding, dang, dong, double sure. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train!